So, uh, kind of like just, give me one second, kind of like just, uh, you know, kind of like ease into um, and just start the show now, which is going to go on to Daily Motion, and I always record like 20 minutes uh, extra, you know, and then when they flip the switch, then I'm like, hey, we're live. You know what I mean? And we're talking to in progress type of thing. Yeah. And so then, you know, I introduce you. uh, Who is Lisa Larson? We're going to talk about animal communication, animal communicators. And, uh, you know, if you're, uh, give me like three more minutes. I have to leave the studio for just a minute. But if you'll get comfortable, get, if you want any drink or, you know, like anything on your end. Uh, so I'll be back in about three minutes. Okay, and I'm going to turn off these lights for that to save that battery. Okay. Test, test, test. Okay, mic check, mic check. Uh, oh, man. Okay. Uh, dang. I hit the record button. There's gonna be, <laughs> there's gonna be, there's gonna be three minute, uh, lag here on the, uh, record. All right. Uh, oh, man. watch me walk by in my, my pajama bottoms. Is that correct? Oh, I, I don't know, because I was out of the studio. All right, let me do a... I I had it all going on with having, you know, being dressed from the waist up, right? (laughs) Okay, deep yoga breath. Good evening, Manhattan, New York City, the world, the universe, and beyond. Let me just make sure my... Okay, it's... uh, We're just warming up. My name's Kirk. This is my spiritual, supernatural, and mystical, magical TV show. We're in our 11th year of programming, and I am, we are, deeply fortunate enough to 
have uh, Lisa Larson on uh, the Google Hangout call with us live feed from Southern California. And uh, we've got about uh, 25 minutes. So I think we're just gonna ease into this. Lisa and I kinda had like a pre-interview and discussed some questions. I asked some questions about animal communication versus pet psychics. And uh, we talked about soul contracts. We talked about, uh, you know, is it just cats and dogs? Is it all different kinds of animals? And Lisa, um, so now I'm introducing you and I think what uh, my first thing is maybe if we could get like uh, like a backstory. Oh, and by the way, if you want to watch live when we go live at 1130, you mm -hmm. and you have another computer, you can pick up. You'll have to turn off the sound because we'll get feedback, but you can pick up the live broadcast uh, at 1130 at MNN.org channel three. So. Um, just to let you kind of sync that up if you want to. Or slash full channel. Uh, let me see. It's, uh, yeah, uh, watch watch videos, mnn.org, and then uh, I think it's watch shows at the top of the bar. Oh, I see. So um, there'll be, you know, there's kind of like a slight lag. I think there's about a, a minute and a half lag on it but at least you'll be able to see what our audience has seen i have like a beautiful golden retriever uh cgi image in the studio right now you said m m n mary uh, mary nancy nancy dot org oh mary nancy nancy okay Watch videos. All right, I'm watching, sit and watch videos. Okay, so I'll see it when it comes up. Uh, you're gonna go to watch videos, and then there should be a sidebar that says, uh, like station one, station two, and we're station three. I don't know. Sometimes on Chrome it doesn't really show up, and on Saf I'm on Safari. Yeah, on Safari it usually shows up better, actually. Um, so here's, okay, so let's just like, okay, here's our, here's our original, uh, you know, official opening. I'm here, uh, my name's Kirk, uh, this is, we're in our 11th year of programming, and we're scanning the globe for the most awesome, powerful, and special and unique healers, and people with unique insights on metaphysics, supernatural, spiritual, mystical, and magical, everything from alchemy to zen and tonight we have we're very fortunate to have lisa larson and it's our series of who is and we ask questions about spiritual teachers and spiritual healers lisa thank you for being here tonight thank you for having me you're uh live on the google and as i said in about 20 minutes we're going to go live feed out to the entire world um so let's do a little backstory for the people watching on daily motion and uh all the past episodes of the show and tonight's show will be put in on daily motion and i'll send you that link so this part is really for the people watching on the um video hosting of uh daily motion but um the backstory is that i read on your website uh, that you were first reading tarot cards and you were kind of uh, psychic and you had psychic experiences. Uh, could you kind of give us a backstory on that before we get to the animals in your life? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've, I grew up in a house where, you know, there was no religious upbringing whatsoever. Uh, my my mom was my mom's side of the family was Jewish. My dad's my dad was Protestant, but we didn't celebrate, you know, anything. Um, and I, uh, you know, I mean, we celebrated all sorts of things, but it wasn't it didn't have anything to do with religion. None of that it had to do with gifts and family and all of that. Um, and uh, I 
probably I was 16 when I first got my 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 got my first deck of tarot cards and it was after um a friend of my the daughter of a friend of my dad's uh had come on vacation with us and um and she had read my cards and I was just hooked and um I you know I got those cards I had them I had them for about five years and I played with them you know I just didn't really know what to do with them because I was stuck in the book in looking at the book and I always tell people if they're learning to row cards they really need to take a class or really really get away from being tied to what the meanings are in the book and start using your intuition it wasn't until I took a class and started understanding wait a second I have to you know, I have to understand what the cards mean, but then I have to let that go and let my intuition take take over. Um, but, you know, one of the things that I always say, you know, when I teach classes or whatever, is that I think that everybody has this, some sort of telepathic ability. I, I think we're born with that. I think as a culture, we've lost it because because you know around the time we're six or seven years old six seven eight years old we start having a, a consciousness of how the world looks at us and uh, you know I mean I think there are there are a lot of people who will say oh mommy yeah you know, I, I, I talked to the cat last night or I saw grandma sitting on the edge of the bed and they immediately, their, their parents immediately shut them down as though that's silly, you know grandma's been dead for three years or whatever. Um, but my own experience was a lot more open than that. Not, that. not that we studied this or anything, but I remember coming home late one night with my mom and dad and uh, I was about six years old, six or seven, and I was, my parents were talking and my dad was telling my mom about uh, a friend of his who had just been committed to a psychiatric institution. And uh, she says, well, why, you know, why did that have to happen? And he says, well, I guess he just lost touch with reality. And I, stood, I, I chimed in and I said, well, how do you know that what he experiences isn't really reality, but what we experience isn't reality at all? And they both got very quiet, and they kind of did one of these things, <laughs> you know, looking around to the back seat, and they looked at each other, and my dad just said, I can't tell you that, that that's not the case. So, you know, while we didn't do a lot of stuff, and like I say, until I, I wasn't, you know, aware of this stuff until I was 16, I think that in and of itself gave me the opportunity to say, oh, there are other things possible. You know, there, there, I, I don't have to, I don't have to live by, by a specific dogma. I don't have to live by a specific belief. I mean, and even though we were, you know, we were taught to, you know, raised to believe in God or some, something, you know, but, um, but that that gave me the opportunity to to keep my mind open for things. Okay, so you were you got from sixteen until then. Were you a working quote unquote psychic or spiritual healer? You know, where do you pick up and start to like the animals become real to you as sentient beings, and you start. You know, like, hey, they are really talking. They are really, and I can hear them, and I want to do this. Well, that was not. I'm I'm very unusual in that way. I mean, a lot of communicators, you'll talk to them, and they'll say, "Oh, yeah, I've been talking to to animals since I was little and stuff." That's that's not the case with me. And the same with I'm a psychic medium as well. And and you know, I mean, if I was, I don't remember it because I really don't remember a lot of my childhood. Um, but uh, I was, I did throw professionally on and off through, you know, probably through my 30s. And then I kind of stopped and I went back to school and I got a master's degree. I got a master's degree in human behavior and, you know, did all of that. And um, after that, it was about 
um, you know, I, I had had an interest in in animal communication. I had heard about it, but I really didn't know that much about it. And when I was living, I was living up north. I was living in Central California, and we had a cat that we had to uh, help cross into spirit. And he was a rescue cat. We had rescued him off the street. So I called the woman who helped me rescue him. She was she was great woman that did a lot of fostering and stuff and she says oh well you know I'm gonna send you send somebody over to you and she sent over an animal communicator and uh, she helped us through that process like nothing I it was it was the most extraordinary experience and I just thought man you know if I could do for her for other people what she did for us in this experience that would just be the greatest thing in the world um, and when I started she and, she and I kind of became friendly and and when I told her you know I've been doing tarot you know on and off all my life she says well you know if you could do that you can do this and it just never occurred to me that I could um, but when she said that I said okay so I, I went and I took some classes. I took classes with um, Carol Gurney, and I took classes with Marta Williams, which two very, very well-known people in the field. Um, did tutoring with, with Teresa Wagner, who is also very well-known. Um, and I started, because I was living in a, in a rather rural area, in a, a kind of a conservative area, uh, I didn't think that I would have many people or animals to practice with so I actually started an online board a forum and I just invited people to start posting their animals and um, I would just sit there because I was teaching at the time I was a college professor so I had summers off and you know and, and really the most of my work was at a specific times you know midterms and finals and stuff was when I was doing a lot of work but a lot of other times I had I had time in between on uh, during the day and I just sat there and talked animals I just you know five six animals a day and I would type it up and I would let them know and I did that for several years and and people people just kind of started saying you really need to do do this for you know and I was like no I don't know you know I, I don't know and okay let, I, let me ask you let me interrupt you because I think this is an important thing that I, I don't want to forget how did you make the jump from speaking to the animals in person and then you know the animal like the client would come to you and say uh, my dog passed and I'd like you to can you you know can you give us like a, a brief like what is it to have the animal alive in person and then you're also provide this service to your clients of animals that have passed as well uh well this may be a semantics thing but there's very few animals that i ever see in person even the animals that are alive i usually do over the phone i'll talk to the people over the phone so in other words you know what <laughs> when we talk to each other our vocals vocalization is our main mode of communication so we have to have a phone or we have to have a webcam or something like that but when i talk to animals telepathy is their mo main mode of communication and that's what i'm talking to them so if, you know whether i'm in the same room two feet away from them or two miles away from them or two thousand miles away from them it's Okay. I'm talking to them the same way. Now, as far as when I started talking to animals in spirit. Like um, when that, you know, when that, if the animal is no longer in the body, the animal is past its life here, and then the client comes to you and says, you know, I want to communicate with my animal who passed away. So what is, is that like a different thing? Do you have to wait a little bit until the animal shows up or no okay that's that would be really interesting for us to hear about okay uh yeah no the, the, i don't know when i first started it like i say when that was my first experience with it of, of her talking to my aunt my cat while he was crossing and then she talked to him while he was on the other side so that was my very first experience so there was nothing in my mind that said you couldn't do it 
you know I mean I just and it and it just happened to be you know I kind of gravitated f towards it for whatever reason um, do I have to wait no we don't I mean again I I talk to humans on the other side as well and and there's a lot of people who say well no we can't talk to humans and t you know we can't talk to anybody on the other side until they've been there for a long time and you know I don't see it that way I mean the only problem with on the human side of it is is that maybe the people are in so much grief and dealing with so many of the details that you have to deal with that maybe there's a block there but I've talked to humans, you know, a week and a half after they've gone. I've talked to animals a minute after they've gone. I've talked to them a week after they've gone, a day after they've gone. The only difference is that what they have to say. So what they have to say a day after they've left is going to be different than what they have to say a week after they've left or a month or three months or a year. And you can think about it like um, if... Uh, you know, if we go on a trip or we move someplace, we move to a new location. If somebody calls us that first day and say, "Oh, well, what's it like there?" You know, "Oh, what do, what do you th how do you feel about you know where you just left and the whole move and everything?" We wouldn't know because we're still involved in the transitionary period. I can talk to them, um, and you know, still get still get the things that people need for the comfort. See, you know, possibly see who they met on the other side, and and they, you know. So okay, here's a uh, here's a question. Okay, first of all, uh, I'd be interested to know, like, what are some of the types of things? Say a dog passes, and the the human wants you to connect to the dog. What would be some of the types of things, uh, number one, that the dog would say? And number two, uh, is it a separate, uh, you know, in uh, Tibetan mysticism, you know, humans and animals can go to something called the bardo or like a way station. I think in Christianity there's a term for it, but I don't know. You know, or is there a separate heaven for animals, or do they, everybody exists in another dimension together? Okay, so, you know, what, what, you know, can you talk a little bit about those things? What does the dog say? Like, oh, I'm glad to be out of that body, or I miss you, or, like, what would be some examples? Y yes to all of the above, you know? I mean, a lot of times they will, they will thank the people for releasing them from their bodies because you know, I mean, a lot of I, I do a lot of counseling for people on ha that have trouble euthanizing their animals um, because they feel like they're killing them. Where I and I I help them understand, no, that that's the one right that animals have that humans don't—the right to die with dignity—and that we are not in those cases we are not killing them; we are releasing them from their suffering. So a lot of times they will ask. They will, um, they will thank them for releasing them from their suffering, and they will tell them, I'm good. You know, I mean, a lot of times the first thing that they tell me, and I may not know anything about the, the issues with the animals, like all I really ask is, is um, uh, you know, how they died when they, when they died or passed. I usually don't like to word, use the word died, uh, you know, their name and their age. Um, but like a lot of times, somebody will somebody go, ah, you know, they'll show me this taking this big breath, or they'll show me running themselves running, which which will tell me, oh, you know, they were they having, did they have problems with their legs, or were they having problems with their chest? They're saying that they can breathe easy now. They're saying that they can run now and have fun and play. Um, the difference between, for instance, talking to humans in, in, on the other side and animals is that animals can, you know, we can talk to animals and have them, they can talk about things that are so much more spiritual because we get through the, you know, humans' lives are very, very large. You know, we've got cousins and this and that and jobs and this. You know, our animals, their whole, we're their whole lives. So we can get through the evidence very quickly. And if the person is spiritual enough, there might be some really, really awesome 
information about soul contracts and you know lifetimes different lifetimes and stuff that animals may talk about and then to your other question about where they there's you know a separate heaven or whatever no i mean energy is energy is energy is energy now this is my belief just from doing this work that you know on the other side there is no there is no species there is no age there is no gender we're just energy but when i connect with them i raise my vibration and they lower their vibration and we meet someplace in the middle but they show me who they were uh, in that body so that the person that I'm reading for can recognize them. Okay, uh, we've got about four minutes until we go out live stream, so I just wanted to notify you of that. And, you know, the thing, I'm going to introduce the show, but, you know, here's what I, uh, the next thing kind of I'd like to, I think that I find interesting, how do you first meet, you talk about the soul contract, we have soul contracts, it's kind of a common thing in New Age speak, we are used to hearing about soul contracts with other people, specifically like family members or whatever, all the way down the line. But how do we first, like on the other side, meet the pet and say like, hey, do you wanna, you know, because people have told me my dog, Serena, you know, you've had lifetime after lifetime, and you know you won't mature, you won't manifest, uh, you won't take a body without her, without each other. At this point, like if you're going to take a body, you know I'm definitely have to have Serena. Like there's no way I'm not having her. Yada yada. So how do you like originally become kindred, uh, you know, to each other to like? you know, why do I have Serena and I don't have another pet? You know what I mean? Like, how do you meet and fall in love with each other as soulmates and be like, I want to be with Serena, you know? Well, you know, that's a, that's a really complicated question. And, and it's one that I don't know what that reading was that you got that told you that, but it is not my belief that you only have that one that you would ever have those soul contracts with. I mean, in my experience in talking to animals, it's we have soul contracts with everybody. They might be very large soul contracts like we'd have with animals. They might be very small soul contracts. And, you know, one cat explained it to me as, you know, that, you know, let's say you walk into a store and you have a soul contract with the person that you're going to buy the food from. You give them that money, you, you walk out and, and, that you completed that contract, whatever, means pretty much nothing. But we have free will, so you can choose to walk out of that store and not pay. Well, then free will has consequences and soul contracts have consequences. So that person may run out of the store chasing you saying, well, you didn't pay. And while he's running out of the store, he falls and he breaks his leg. and he either falls and breaks his leg and loses his job and becomes homeless, or he falls and breaks his leg and then does retraining and becomes a billionaire. Okay, so, we got we got like one minute till we go live, but here's what I want to tap on more. How did I first, how do you first meet another soul on the other side and say, hey, I'm, I'm going to incarnate. You want to go or let's go? Like that's, like there was obviously a time when I didn't know Serena is... Mm-hmm. All right. Do you need to wait until we start again? Yeah. Give us, uh, why don't you take a deep breath and uh, we're going to, you know, and queue up your computer if you want. Uh, once again, just please turn down the volume on yeah, it's your, done. I'm not seeing where, you, where it is. On your should. computer. Uh, it should be uh, a right-hand sidebar, 20 seconds till we go live. Um, it should just say watch what's on now and it should be a right sidebar and it should say spirit channel number three. Okay, I'll, I'll look. And then uh, you yeah, just yeah. need to turn down the volume on that and uh, try to talk just a little bit louder so I can get a red bar on your voice. Uh, if you could just kind of, you know, just project just a little bit louder. I don't want you to be uncomfortable, but 
And we are uh, live right now. Uh, I'm going to do an intro, and then we're going to go back to... Good evening, Manhattan, New York City, the world, the universe, and beyond. My name's Kirk, and this is my spiritual, supernatural, mystical, and magical TV show. We're here every Monday, 11.30 p.m., channel 1997 in high def and 1993. And also, we are broadcast live around the world at mnn.org that's mary nancy nancy at uh mnn.org channel three the spirit channel so if you go on the website uh you got to hit the sidebar spirit channel channel three let me i need to move a little bit because i think i'm a little out of camera uh tonight we are continuing our series called who is so we, a couple weeks we did one on who is Brendan Culleton, we've done who is Oprah, who is Ty Lopez, and you know, it's just a continuing series. Tonight we actually are very fortunate to have on the live feed from uh, Southern California, and we are in mid-interview at this point with Lisa Larson, and you can see up on the screen her website, and I didn't put it on the screen, but we're going to show the website in, you know, a few minutes. It's called Paws Talk, P-A-W-S-T-A-L-K, uh, net, right? Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Pawstalk.net. So we have Lisa... And we've already, Lisa and I have already, I'm just fascinated by animal communication. We've discussed, uh, you know, she ha makes the distinction on her career and with her clients. Look, I'm not a pet psychic. I am an animal communicator. Uh, and in our pre-interview, we were just talking about soul contracts with animals and humans. And then how she will communicate with an animal across the world while still in body. But also uh, communicate and also give empathy and grieving counseling to the uh, humans and communicate with the animal that has passed onto the other side. So I think that's the update, right? That's the right update, Lisa? Is that pretty much yeah. <laughs> pretty good? Okay, so uh, the question and the other thing I wanted to talk about was um, I mean, just to give you the backstory, Lisa began reading tarot cards and uh, she discussed some ex spiritual experiences with me when she was in her, her teens. And then it was kind of this hop, skip and a jump to, uh, you know, somebody, wait a minute, somebody uh, was an animal communicator for you. Is that what first happened? Mm-hmm. Yeah, when I had a, an animal that I, a cat, that I had to help cross into spirit and a rescue organization sent an animal communicator over and I just thought, you know, if, she, if I could help other people the way that, that she helped us in that, in that moment, in that transition, I just thought that would be the greatest thing ever because it was really valuable to us. Okay, and so now, and how long have you been doing this? How many decades, years? Uh... You know, where you really were just, this is my focus as a healer, as a medium. You know, I choose the animals. And did you have a soul contract? I mean, did you know before you incarnated, hey, I'm doing this, you know, in retrospect, looking backward? Um, I've been doing it for probably about 12 years, uh, maybe a little more. Uh, and in retrospect, yes, I do believe that this is certainly my calling because I certainly tried to do a lot of other stuff, <laughs> but I had, to, I had to learn a lot of other stuff before I could get to this spot. I used to be a professional musician, and I graduated one of the most prestigious music schools in the country. And um, four years after that, I was in a car accident and I injured my arm and my neck. And I tried to play for a while, but I, I couldn't. So I went through a lot of different things. Like when I told you I was teaching and I was doing tarot in and out, you know, it was, it was mostly kind of trying to find my way because I had lost my music career. And I when I started doing this, when it, because it just kind of happened, I lost my teaching job during the crash, and people just started calling me. 
I mean, they just started calling me. I never even looked for another teaching job. And um, I had been practicing a long time, uh, but it was just, it was really meant to be. And now when I, the more I, the mo longer I do it, the more I understand that even the things that I meant, that I learned in music school and learned working in a hospital and learned teaching and learned at all of editing, I'm a video editor, all of these different things play into what I do now. They help me what I do now. And I kind of look at this as, you know, where when I was a musician, I always wanted that applause because I wanted to be able to help people feel what I felt when I heard good music. But now the, the applause that I get is one pair of paws at a time. <laughs> and, that, and that is really satisfying. That is really satisfying. Okay, so let's, you know, we're going out live feed now uh, to an unlimited audience. Um, Manhattan, New York City, the world, America, the universe, and beyond. So let's try and pick up. We're here with Lisa Larson. Her website is uh, pawstalk.net. I'm going to pull it up uh, in a few minutes to show you, give you a look. And uh, tonight's episode will be loaded in, as always, at dailymotion.com under Kirk Spiritual Media, Kirk Spiritual Television. So if you want to see the whole show, it's going to be about an hour long. So Lisa, here live from San Diego, animal communicator. And let's pick up in mid-interview now for the live feed. Uh, we were talking about uh, soul contracts and animals, communicating with an animal that's in a body, communicating with an animal that's out of a body. And you had said, you know, once the animal is out of pain, uh, you know, you see them running and stretching. And there's no, according to you, there's no such thing as like a human, a heaven for humans or a, a dimension only for humans and then a dimension. So basically animals and human souls commune and live together in these other dimensions that we're from and so here's where i wanted to pick up how do you know you're going to incarnate with uh, an animal well we have we have free will and you know you had asked the question how how did you meet that so that your dog that you have that soul contract with. And I just want to relay one of the, you know, we also talked about what kinds of information that you get from it, that I get from an animal in spirit. Well, I was talking to one cat, his name was Harpo, and he ended up being this just incredibly wise old soul. And he, he, he was almost professorial the way that he talked. And he talked about how small our lifetime, how, how, how small our lifetimes are. You know, to us, because it's where our consciousness lies, they seem, it seems very important. But our lifetimes, he talks about it, is just a small experience on the soul's evolutionary journey, on a large soul's evolutionary journey. And you talk about meeting someone and having these soul contracts. Well, he gave the example of, let's say, you know, you go on a trip to Bali, wherever, and on your trip, on your vacation, you meet somebody and you have a great time with them and you really get along with them. Well, it's your choice through our free will that we will either just have dinner or have the weekend and then that will be it. Or we can exchange addresses and become lifelong friends and see each other over and over and over again. Well, that's what he talks about our lifetimes being like. They're experiences on the soul's evolutionary journey. And, you know, how or when you met, you know, who's to say you met at some point, you know, it's, it's kind of like saying, well, when did you meet, you know, this person in your life? Um, you know, you have that consciousness, so you might be able to remember, but sometimes you've known somebody for so long, you can't even remember. You know what I mean? Okay. Yes, I, I understand. Okay. So let me just take the uh, example of my uh, dachshund, Serena, 
who some people call snuggles. And so does an animal like could an animal come to you and say, like, you know, in the new age speak, they say, oh, you know, I chose to learn this in this lifetime, and I chose to be an artist, or I chose to do this, and that's what I'm learning, and these are my life lessons. Does that apply for animals as well? Yeah, it, it, do, yeah, it does. And, and the way that it comes through in animals is, for instance, when I talk to people and I'm connecting them with their animals who are on the other side, one of the, stan well, several of the standard questions I ask is why were you here what were you here to teach your person what was you, what were you here to learn from your person and what was your purpose here some of sometimes they cross over sometimes they're a little bit different but that is in essence the soul contract so um so animals will say you know i was here to teach my mom patience or i was here to teach my mom how to be a mother. I, I had one uh, one woman I talked to and she had lost, I think it was two dogs within a very short time. And, and then she had a baby just two months after the last dog that had passed. And I didn't know any of that, uh, but I had said that she, she had, that her dog was there to teach her how to be a mother and that her baby, I said, do you ever see your baby looking and just laughing at nothing? And she says, all the time. And I said, well, that's the dog, because the dog is there looking after the baby. Some animals might be in your life to help you take care of that child while you're in that life. Some, peop some animals might help you get through an illness some you know and i see it animals have different relationships yes we're always our you know there are babies but sometimes i'll see a relationship where there's a business relationship that they you know animals actually help the people with their business the, or their or the animal is the parent in the relationship or the animal is a best friend in the relationship okay let so, me uh let me just uh let me just stop because I think this is an important thing and I, I'd like to really understand this. When you said, you know, energy is energy. So I don't know if there's a difference between an animal soul and a human soul, but, you know, could the animals say one time I want to be a horse? Didn't we talk about this in the pre-interview? Like some animals prefer certain bodies. Yeah. Yeah, it is my personal opinion, and again, I know this is very controversial, but it's my personal opinion that animals are on a higher spiritual level than humans are. And I have seen, I've talked to animals who have been humans, I've talked to humans who have been animals, or I've seen humans that have been animals, or animals that have gone back and forth. Uh, but yes, it's, it's kind of like, you know, some people prefer to drive a Honda. You know, some some animals just prefer to be a cat or a dog or a horse, or they might choose something different just to to experience it for whatever soul contract or whatever purpose they need to learn that from. Um, and then I forgot your second question. That's okay. Okay, so wait, let me. So you go into a session with a client and. An example of, you know, some of the questions is what you said. Okay, now in my case, Serena, the dog and the dog and the human. Okay, in my case, the dog, Serena is going to be learning something from me as well as teaching me something. Is that Absolutely. correct? Absolutely. No question in my mind. Yeah, and I think what I was, what I had was going for is that I feel that animals, yes, animals can go back and forth between lifetimes, but a lot of times people think that you have to be an animal first before you rise up to the level of being a human, and I think it's the opposite. And I was at a spiritualist church once listening to someone, and they, they were saying, well, animals don't have souls, and we know this because they, they can't conceptualize God. And I'm like, oh, please, you know, I mean, we have to sit here and conceptualize God. We have to go, oh, 
Animo, I'm gonna right, 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 right. Animals. Of course, oh. animals are just there. They don't have to do all that. They don't have to conceptualize it. They just live it. They just exist in it. They exist in that state. Not that they don't come into a consciousness and have to live in this world, but their state is a higher spiritual state on, on in general. Okay, so um, now let's sep kind of try and separate what you do. You know what, I think this might be a good time to kind of show your website here and just pull it up for the audience. Uh, give me one second. Okay, uh, for those of you on the live stream right now, as you can see in the background, I have Lisa's uh, website. It's P-A-W-S-T-A-L-K-Net. Pause talk, you get uh, adorable animals, and then we have home about uh, payments, lost pets, resources, blogs, and then she is linked up on all social media, so she's very easy to find, and you know, there's a long uh, thing about what she does, and then you go down to the bottom, and you see, you know, about animal communication, testimonials, uh, Rainbow Bridge, and um, it kind of goes on. So it's a, it's a nice website. It's a soothing, calm website. So we just wanted to uh, put in a quick plug for that. And if you just tuned in, we have Lisa Larson here on the live stream from uh, Southern California. And we're in mid-interview talking about animal contracts, humans and animals, souls, uh, animals that have passed, animals that still are alive, and Lisa, she, most of the animals she tells us she speaks with, she doesn't even see in person. So, um, now, where do we pick up again? I forgot. What were we... The human learns things from the animals. The animals learn things from the human, too, right? Oh, absolutely. You know, we've all, we all have our paths. You know, we all have our own paths. There are a very rare few exceptions where I have seen animals who have explained that they didn't have to really come back. They, they were so advanced, they didn't have to come back, but they came back for their human to learn specifics. But, but most of the time it's, you know, they're here to learn something, we're here to learn something, and our sole contract with them is that you know, through our behaviors, through our relationships, those, we're going to learn those things through those things, through those relationships and behaviors. Okay, let me, here's an, here's a thing I'd really like to know. So, okay, the animal is passed and the human is grieving. And so, you know, the client's like, hey, I want to talk to, you know, Fido, Fluffy, and then you talk to the animal, and the animal's actually mad at the human. Does that ever happen? That doesn't happen. Never had that happen. I've never had that happen. So the animals uh, are very eloquent in talking about their lives to you and saying, you know, here's what I was doing, and, and you know, and how do you, as a medium, do you just point blank pass along the message, or do you translate a little bit? Do you filter... You got to filter a little bit, right? Yeah, I mean, I have a master's in human behavior. Um, I, there's a lot of people, I think, you know, you talked about the difference between pet psychics and animal communicators. You know, I think a lot of psychics have seen that, you know, animal communication is like the big thing now, so they just hang out a pet psychic shingle, and it's it's not the same, you know. Um, I think you can do a lot of damage. People are very, very vulnerable with both, you know, both animals in spirit and in body, and when they're ill, when they're behavioral things. Uh, you know, it's 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 so complex. The the messages that I have to give. Now, I'm always very truthful, but I do have to be circumspect in the way that I give it. I, I try not to, you know, give things in a way that, you know, I, I have to read the people and, and see what it is that they can handle. Because a lot of times, like for behavioral problems, you know, 
usually behavioral problems, the problem is not with the animal. The problem is with the people or the household. There's something that's going on there. So, so the animal is really trying to tell the human, hey, something, you know, something is happening and you're not paying attention and that's exactly. why I'm acting out. Exactly. It's, it's like, you know, I've tried to show you, I've tried to show you, I've tried to show you, and you didn't get it. So now I'm going to pull out the big guns and I'm going to start peeing, or I'm start, going to start getting aggressive, or I'm going to start doing this. That's, that's their last resort because they don't know how else to tell you that they either are physically ill or, or emotionally they're upset. Now, have you ever spoken with, like, uh, or, you know, communicated with an animal that was, like, out in the street or abused, I mean, or harmed intentionally by humans? You know, what do you, what is your take on all of that? Unfortunately, yes. I've, I work with a lot of rescue organizations, so I work with a lot of animals who have suffered uh, incredible ab abuse. Um, and obviously it's not one of the, the, you know, one of my more favorite points of my job. Uh, but, but being able to help them is, uh, I recently talked to an animal, somebody called me, one of the rescue organizations I work with quite often, uh, called Rescue House out here in San Diego. It's a great rescue organization. Uh, she called me and she said, well, we have a mother kitten who, uh, she had one kitten three days ago and that kitten died and she was rejecting it and it died, not because you just rejected it, but it, for another reason. And now she's had four more kittens and she's rejecting it and she won't, she won't feed them. And I talked to her and she had been out on the street and she had been abused and she had been, she had had so many litters and she was tired of it because animals don't want to give up their babies any more than people do. And they go through grief and, and sorrow and trauma and she was just done with it. She didn't want to have anything to do with a, attaching herself emotionally to these babies. So. You know, I talked to her, I told her she had been, you know, they, she had had an operation so she would never have to do that, but we really needed her to help her babies. And within, uh, the woman emailed me or texted me and she said within three hours of me talking to her um, that she started feeding her babies. And I, I love my job. <laughs> I mean, that's the one, you know, the few times when you talk to rescue animals, but unfortunately then you then i still have to talk to them and say okay now your baby's gonna go away you know and and everybody's gotta leave and and that's one of the things that i have such a hard time with with rescue animals and breeding oh god i hate breeding with such a passion i can't tell you because it's like slavery you know i mean when you think about slaves being having their their children taken away from them and never seeing them again, you know? I mean, that's, animals don't have, the animals don't miss their kids any more, any less than humans do. I mean, you know, the people may understand that they're not going to see them anymore. You know, animals just have a confusion. It's just like somebody picks them up and walks them away. And it's like, wait a second, where'd my mom go? Where'd my siblings go? Where, where you know, and mom's going, where's my baby? And, so it's it's some of it is very very sad and and that's why I really give props to people who do rescue and and do fostering and do trap neuter release and all of that stuff that boy I couldn't I wouldn't have the 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 wherewithal to do some of that stuff but um, it's they do great work. Okay, we have about three minutes left in our live feed, so I'm gonna. Uh in a in, you know, minute close out the live feed, but I'd like you to just hang out so I could wrap up uh, the rest of the Daily Motion as well. So okay. for our live feed, as we're going to close out, what, like, you know, I'm very savvy because I'm a medium. Uh, I'm a shamanic healer, so I'm very clued into the animals. Animals show up in my life at various times. And I, at, you know, at a point had my process, but then... They became real to me. At a certain point, they became 
just as valid and just as real as any human, if not more to me. But what in our closeout for our live feed, you know, real quick, I mean, in closing, what are you going to tell, what would you tell, you know, our audience that how do you make the animals real to somebody? Like, what do you, it, you know, people, they repeat and say, they're sentient beings. I believe they're sentient beings and blah, blah. But how do you really make people look at an animal like it's real? It's a real multidimensional, interdimensional, all feeling and even knowing entity. What do you, you know, how do you... Well, that's that's a tough question. So there's some people that are never never going to be convinced. But my my answer to that is all you have to do is watch an animal. All you have to do is watch animals together and watch the love that they have. Watch a mother a, a mother cat with her kittens, a mother lion with her her cubs, a, a mother puppy, a horse, whatever it is, a, the ho uh, you know, a horse when it gets its baby taken away, a broodmare when it gets its baby taken away. I mean, all you have to do is look at these animals and you see the pain, you see the love, you see the emotion, and you see that their emotions are no different than ours. They're just in a different body, that's all. We all have the same emotions. They may do things to do with them differently. We have a brain that we do things with, but they have other skills that they do things with. Brains do not make us superior in, by, any, by any stretch. And all we have to do is watch animals and, and understand that they that they experience all of the same things as we do and and if you understand that then you that you have to stop doing some of the things to animals that that we do to animals okay uh let me see we have a minute so let me just close out our live feed uh if you just tuned in uh i want you to go to daily motion and find kirkspiritual.com or if you're watching it on the live uh, feed right now, the full hour with Lisa Larson is going to be on DailyMotion.com within uh, the next 12 hours. So I'd like to thank everybody that watched live and that checked in at MNN.org. Once again, uh, Lisa's website is Paws Talk, as in Animal Paws, P-A-W-S-T-A-L-K. Dot net pause talk and there's a lot of great articles and Lisa look for her on YouTube and other social media because she has done other interviews that I've watched and it's fascinating which kind of led me then to ask her to be on the show and so that's our live show we're wrapping it up from New York City Manhattan I will see you next week in the Cyber Temple of Love, Mystical, Magical, Spiritual, Supernatural. And you can check me out at KirkSpiritual.com. And I, I'm honored to be your sacred healer tonight. And thanks for watching. Shakti. Shakti. Okay. So that wraps up the live feed. So um, you have anything to say in closing? They're going to be wrapping up the studio in about two or three minutes uh is there anything else i mean i'd just personally like to thank you once again i'd love for you to come on you know in another couple months if you feel comfortable sure. or you know have anything like a new perspective or a new uh, subject that you want to talk about you know please feel free to contact me and just okay. go hey kirk you know i i want to be on your show and we'll just uh, schedule and plug you know plug you in about anything I you want to talk about. That would be great. I really appreciate this. This was uh, really great. And I, I really appreciate the questions that you ask because, like I say, um, there are questions that I don't normally get. Usually I get kind of the same questions uh, over and over again. And uh, these, this has been really great. I really appreciate your interest in it, and I appreciate your insights. Okay, last question. Uh, do you consider yourself, like, do you favor in your own personal life? How many animals have you, what would you, as you know, after this whole conversation, you can't say had an animal. What, what do you, that you communed with an animal, you, 
you know, you had each other. Did have you had animals your whole life, or? I have, uh, yeah, I have been had animal companions my entire life. Okay, that's I, it, companions. I, yes. Yeah, I my first. I remember picking out my first cat when I was about three years old, and and she had babies under my bed when I was four, and I, I've had I've I've never seriously been without a cat or an animal. I've always had cats. Uh, I've had dogs in there on and off, but yeah, I mean, except for when somebody, you know, except for like a few months, if somebody had passed and I, you know, wait, needed to wait to get somebody, I've had animals all my whole life. Yeah, they've just been my entire life. I'm sure I was a cat in a past life. A cat. <laughs> you yeah. were a cat in a past life. Yes. You know, I always thought I was a dolphin. Very possible. Even, even like in my 20s, before I got clean and sober and I, you know, became out as a mystic and a psychic and read tarot cards, I always just thought I, I know I was a fish. Yeah. I know I was a dolphin and I won't, <laughs> I, I won't eat fish. I won't eat fish. I'm not kidding. This is true because I, I feel like it's eating my family and it was like yeah. the weirdest I mean, I have eaten fish on very rare occasions, but the truth be told, like I could have a burger, God forbid. I, you know, I'm trying to get my new relationship to that, but the fish thing is like, I really feel like I'm eating my family. I cannot do this. There are certain things that you know. I mean, there are places that you have fascinations with or, or things that you have terror that you can't watch. You, you know, those things are, are absolute indicators of a past life, you know. I mean, I've got a fascination with New York. I've got a fascination with New Orleans. And I've actually been to through past life regression and seen some of those lives. But when you, when you have those kinds of fascinations or those kinds of fears or those kinds of, <laughs> yeah, it's really, it's really interesting to be able to see what, what those past lives must have been just by your experiences now. I feel more uh, germane to water than anything. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I, I'm i going to say I'm a fish out of water or something, but, you know, I feel more germane to water. Like, I feel truly like that is my true home. Well, you need to go swim with the dolphins then. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I did go down to Florida one time, but uh, the guy said, you know... The dolphins usually don't go to the men. For whatever reason, he was like, oh, they won't really go to the men. You know, they'll go to the women and the, the kids first. And so they didn't come up to me. Oh, really? They didn't, huh. uh, you know. But anyways. Well, that, that speaks more to the dolphins than it does to you, I think, at that point. I get it was, but you know, it was like a small cage thing, and yeah, uh, you know, we could talk about that another time. So we're gonna have to wrap this up. So is uh, first of all, once again, thank you. I'm honored to be in your presence and have uh -huh. learned so much from you, and to have you on the show. And once again, the, you know, I'll send you the link. I'm gonna Perfect. try and just go home and put the show on into cyberspace. So give me a couple hours, and it'll be live in a few hours. Uh, is there anything else you'd just like to, you know, that's on your mind that you'd like to sum up for any prospective client or, you know, anything that else that you, in closing, would like to, you know, put out there? Uh, no, I just really appreciate people keeping their minds open to this.